What would happen if a disruptive event meant that you no longer had full access to your critical technology infrastructure or data? You need a disaster recovery plan. And in this video, I'm going to answer the question, what is a disaster recovery plan? While business continuity focuses on recovering, restoring, and maintaining the whole of an organization's operations in the face of a major disruptive, unexpected event, Disaster recovery refers to the specific part of the organization's activities that have to do with communications and technology infrastructure and data. A disaster recovery plan is a formal document that sets out how an organization can efficiently and effectively recover access to its critical data and technology systems after a disruptive event. When an unplanned incident happens, it's vital that organization can resume work as quickly as possible. The business continuity plan describes that in totality and the disaster recovery plan is therefore the part of your business continuity plan, which deals with fundamentally two things restoring the IT and communication systems and technology and gaining full access to good quality, clean data that the organization relies upon. When we talk about unplanned disruptive events, what are we talking about? Well, of course, we could be talking about natural disasters. We could be talking about man-made events like war or terrorism or civil disruption. The causes could be accidents or human error. Or increasingly these days, we might be talking about cybercrime. And the extent of these events can vary widely. It might be limited to a single data center or a single building or operational unit. It could affect the whole organization. It could geographically be local or city-wide. It could even be regional or national or global in scale. As a result, you need an effective disaster recovery plan that can minimize disruption, contain commercial losses, reduce reputational impact upon the organization, and avoid regulatory or legislative breaches. So what needs to go into your disaster recovery plan? Well, here is a simple six point framework. First, you need a full inventory of your assets, hardware, communications, software, and data. Second, you need to determine what are the minimum acceptable limits to the disruption that your organization can properly cope with, both in terms of downtime and service level. Third, you need to document your disaster recovery processes and procedures in terms of any services or technology or tools that you have either developed yourself or procured from the marketplace. These will include things like key service level agreements and uptime guarantees, your restoration priorities for data and functionality, any backup systems, backup sites, or backup resources, data validation and reversion, and also code versioning to ensure that once you're back up and running, you are using the latest, most appropriate version of your code and of your data. Fourth, your plan needs to set out your disaster recovery responsibilities, both operational and 
authorizational. Who's going to do the stuff and who's going to authorize the changes? And critically, under this uncertain, disruptive scenario, some of the key role holders that you may rely upon may not be available. So what are your fallbacks? Who is going to step into the shoes of each of your operational and authorizational key roles? Fifth, you need to craft a communication plan. It needs to take into account the important communication that needs to go to key stakeholders, both inside your organization and outside of it. In particular, think about the communication you might need with regulators like data protection regulators, health and safety regulators. Also, think about the communications that are going to be necessary to help protect your reputation. Engage your organization's PR function in creation of your disaster recovery plan. And finally, think about the needs for confidentiality and data security when crafting your communication plan. My sixth component to your disaster recovery plan is your training and rehearsal program. A plan is no use unless people know how to implement it and unless you have tested it and tested it in the most realistic way that you possibly can. And this is where organizations tend to fall over. Having a plan alone is no good. What if people can't access the building to get the plan? Do they know what to do? First, you need to inform people about what the plan is and how to access it in different scenarios. Second, you need to train people so that they can use the plan and work through it efficiently and effectively without error. Third, you need tests, you need simulations, you need rehearsal. You need to find out what works and what doesn't work. And therefore, fourth, you need to review the outcomes from those tests and rehearsals. You need to learn the lessons and make revisions to create an updated and better plan. And of course, as your infrastructure changes, you need to constantly keep the plan under review. So disaster recovery plan is the component of your wider business continuity plan that focuses on your technology, communications and data systems and assets. In a big project where your project could cause that unexpected disruptive event, you need to plug into your organization's disaster recovery plan. Please do give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. There's loads more great project management content to come. So please do subscribe to our channel and hit the bell so you don't miss any of it. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.